cute or does she actually look like a clown? There's just too much going on. It just doesn't look like she spent that much money on it. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I am trying to get to 10,000 followers. I know, it's a crazy idea, uh, but it would be a dream of mine. A new season of Drag Race is starting this week. That is right, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9 is starting this week, and we have already got the twist, we already got the queens, and we've already got the entrance looks. So we have to talk about it. So first up, what we know. We find out that this season we are only getting eight queens. That is right, this is gonna be one of our smallest seasons yet. And we also find out that they are not even competing for a grand prize. They are competing for a grand prize for charity. That is right, the queens are giving back. Now I also know that this is gonna be a non-elimination season. And I'm like, girl, twist, 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 twist. What is happening? I don't know how I feel about this. I love that the queens are giving back. I find that this is a very interesting idea that they are doing some sort of a charity element to it. But I wonder if we're gonna get the drama. Already we have a non-elimination season and now you're throwing in charity on top of it. And I'm like, why would you want to go on? Oh, I know why you wanna go on. You wanna go on because you wanna get the exposure and the exposure they will. But the one thing that I will say is because it is a charity season and because it is non-elimination, the queens were well paid. It is said that they got $25,000 to put towards their wardrobes so that they don't have to put it out of their pocket. And on top of it, they're getting paid $50,000 just as an appearance fee. And I'm like, finally, this is what we needed. I love that they are getting appearance fees. I love that they're properly getting paid. Now, if you think this is crazy, just put it this way. When you win uh, other shows like Survivor or Big Brother, they pay you per week that you've been there, something like $3,000 a week. So finally, Drag Race is doing something similar. And you kind of need that because they are giving up a lot of gigs to be there. And these are not queens that pay little, these are queens that are getting paid really well. Trixie Mattel famously said that she lost money on All Stars 3 because of the amount of gigs she had to give up. Now, that goes to show you what a commitment this show is. So I love that the queens are getting renuminated for this, but I don't know how this is going to affect the competition. So we're going to have to wait and see. The good thing is, is we don't have to wait a very long because we have already got their entrance looks. So it's time to play my favorite game. That is right, we are playing Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of All Stars 9, the entrance looks, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First to walk into the workroom is Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming in in this sequence, a dress, a jacket, a tire. She's coming in with these uh, boots and her signature black and white face. But she didn't stop at her face, she gave you a checkerboard of black and white hair. Mama, they said we are getting a new season and we are gonna start off with a bang. And with a bang, we did. I love that she decided to go with sequins. Uh, we don't usually see Gottmik with sequins, so I I think that this is a nice departure from her, but I also like that she's leaning into her black and whiteness. We saw a little bit of that black and white on her original season, but this time she's bringing it bigger and better than ever because it's kind of become part of her identity, kind of her color combination these days. The dress itself is very well made and definitely got a lot of interesting details, especially around the waist where it gives you more of that like womanly shape. Uh, but Gottmik is doing drag the way Gottmik knows how to do drag, which is expensive, mama, because of that hair. Oh my God, that hair says everything you need to know. First of all, I am sure a very expensive designer made it because it is per, I love, love, love the hair. All in all, I think this is a good start and definitely worth a... Oh.
Next up is Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrews comes out saying, you can't read the dolls. Well, mama, I am going to read you because she's coming out wearing this black bodysuit with these giant buckle detailing, this black skirt with these black boots and this blonde hair. And she brought her purse as well. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Roxy Andrews is such an amazing queen and she brings the fashion every single time. So when I saw this, I was like, this feels like such a throwaway look. But then when I did my little research online, I found out that this whole look is head to toe Balenciaga. So you know she spent money on it. It just doesn't look like she spent that much money on it, if you know what I mean. Buying designer is expensive, but buying designer doesn't make it drag. This feels like a very cool girl going on Rodeo Drive. It doesn't feel like a drag queen. And I like my drag queens to feel like drag queens, and this is not really giving me my zhuzh. Honestly, I'm really disappointed, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm gonna go ahead and give Miss Roxy Andrews a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Ms. Vanji or Vanessa Vanji Mateo, if you want to be politically correct. Ms. Vanji is coming out wearing these red thigh high boots, this little purple skirt, this white t shirt, and this frilly jacket. And I'm thinking to myself, where is this bitch going? Because I. I'm a little bit lost with this. This definitely feels like Vanjie's aesthetic and Vanjie's vibe, but this is this feels like what Vanjie would wear to a daytime gig, not to the entrance of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9. I was expecting a lot more. Now, if you look at the pieces, I'm sure they are pretty good expensive pieces, but they're just mixed and matched. At least that's the vibe I'm getting. You got purple, you got red, you got leopard, you got daytime hair, you got this jacket that looks like it's from Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. And I'm like, there's just too much going on. And like, not the good too much. The too much is in like, you need to edit. You need a color combo. You need a vision. This one's really not doing it for me. I feel like this is something she had in her closet and pulled in for the entrance look. And I think this is where we're gonna start seeing the flaws with this new format. Since this is a non elimination season and they've been there before and the entrance look is not getting rated, we are definitely already seeing some flaws in this format. All in all, I'm not digging this look. I was expecting so much more and that is why it's gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up is Angeria Paris Van Michaels, or Angie as she's like to be called. Angeria is coming out in this a pink a leather jacket with these sort of stud spike detailing all over it. She's paired it with these uh, leather chaps, these gloves, and some big hair. Now I will say, I was a little bit surprised that this is what Angie came out with. She usually does things that are a little bit more pageanty. So to see her go in this sort of rock and roll vibe was like a surprise to me. And I kind of like it. I always felt that Angeria was a little bit of a strange casting choice because she was not my personal standout from her season. But if she's coming out with this on her first look, you know she's come here to show you more drag, different things, and to switch it up. And switch it up, she does. I'm not a pink girl myself, but this is the type of pink that I would definitely wear. Overall, I think that this is really good and definitely worth a thumb. Next up, we have a Nina West, and Nina West is coming out in this a white sort of a dress with these orange and purple polka dots paired with this orange hair. And girl, we got some things to talk about. Is it just me or does she actually look like a clown? And I don't mean a clown and in like a shady way. I mean, she actually looks like a clown. The white with the little polka dots. Um, is that a reference she's making? Because that's the only thing that sort of makes sense here. The thing about Nina West is Nina West always has the most interesting style. And I mean interesting in the British way, not interesting in like a good way. This is a choice. On the positive side, you can clearly see that she got a designer to make it. On the negative side, it doesn't look good. Honestly, I applaud the effort. It's just not for me. And I actually don't know how to make it better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, it's gonna be a drab. <laughs>
Next up is Plastic Tiara, and Plastic Tiara is coming out in this beige sequins dress with this coiffed hair and more jewels and sequins all over it. So immediately I'm like, thank God, because we had two clunkers before, so we needed somebody to do something decent, and I am thankful that Plastic is on here. Now Plastic is a gorgeous queen, and a lot of queens who look this good rely on their beauty. Now I'm not saying that Plastic doesn't use her beauty, but she gives you good drag. You can see that she's spending money on her outfits. You can see that she's giving you uh, a lot of drag excellence despite looking as good as she does. When you look that good, you could probably wear a bikini and you could be done with it, but Plastique is always elevating it and elevating she is yet again for this entrance look. She is coming out to make a statement and I love it. This feels super elegant, super expensive and Asian excellence, of course. All in all, this is a gorgeous and definitely gonna get a foul. Next up, it's Georges, and Georges is coming out wearing this sort of wine Bordeaux bodysuit with sequins on it and all of the cutouts. Now, when I talk about a queen relying on body, this is a queen that's relying on body. Does Georges look good? Yes, but Georges is infamously able to sell a tablecloth as a gorgeous gown. And that's the thing, when you look this good, you don't really need to try hard. And I personally think Georges didn't try that hard. This is the complete opposite of someone like Plastique. The problem is, is that she looks good and I'm kind of jealous that she can put minimal effort and look this fabulous. Personally with this outfit, I wish there was a little bit more to it. The thing is, I don't know what to add to it to make it that much better. The one thing I will say is that I wish she would have went with like a red boot to match with the outfit, but I understand why she went with black because it matches her hair. I just don't know that those two necessarily need to match. But other than that, that's the only sort of critique I have. Now, is it my favorite? Absolutely not. But can I really drab it? No, no, I can't. So it's going to get a soft bow. Next up, we have Chanel, and Chanel is coming to us from season one. So I wasn't sure what to expect from her. She's coming out in this sort of snakeskin uh, gown with all of these interesting cutouts. She's paired it with this big hair, and it's definitely giving me sort of those Medusa Evil Queen vibes, and I kind of love it. I love when people go in a little bit of a ooky spooky alternative vibe. I didn't necessarily think about uh, Chanel in that way, but I guess she's trying to reference her infamous Medusa look that she then switched up and made it elegant and pageanty. All in all, this is a glow up and a glow up I love to see. This is why I wanna watch an All Stars to see what the queens have been up to. This look from head to toe is so great and definitely gonna get a bow. And with only eight queens this season, that is it for the entrance looks. What are you thinking? I have my reservations. I feel like this is not the best drag we've seen and that kills me because these are some of the most interesting, coolest queens we've had on an all-star season for a very long time. But enough about that, uh, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week uh, this week has to go to oh. Nina West. I don't think that this was a surprise to anyone. Spoiler alert, I feel like Nina West is probably gonna get a lot of drabs this season, but that is just my prediction and hopefully she can prove me wrong, but we're not starting off on the best foot. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Plastic Tiara. Again, probably no surprise. She is the one who's really come to play. She's come to show you uh, that she is the best and she's coming for that crown. And I love, love, love that. Uh, regardless of if she wins or doesn't win, if she continues showing me drag like this, she's gonna win America's heart. Okay, y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with uh, my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. As I said, I am trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. I know that's a crazy thing to dream of, but one can dream. I am a Galulu queen after all. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>